this is first dibs in conversation with Valerie and Mimi and Levi. Um, we'll introduce everyone here shortly. I'm Levi Higgs. I'm the archivist at David Webb. I have a big social media following about jewelry. Um, and I was really excited to be asked to uh, sort of facilitate this conversation. Um, so with that, I want to jump right in and, and say, hi, Valerie. Hi, Mimi. How are you doing? We're well, thank We're, you. Both well. Weather's good. Lovely day. So you're joining us from London. It from looks London. beautiful there. Um, can we just get a little quick breakdown about who you each are, how you met each other, just sort of a very quick overview. Well, I think uh, Valerie was introduced to me via the son of an old friend. So uh, she met him at a party and this guy said to her, I think you should meet Mimi Lipton. And she came and she met me. And now, you know, we are, we are sisters. Almost. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm the younger sister, okay? okay. <laughs> so I have a gallery in London. The gallery is called Objet d'Emotion. And I work, I represent, I would say about 20 very talented designers who are in, in the sort of contemporary uh, fine jewelry field. Uh, and I also have a different business, which is more wholesale. Uh, I met Mimi, yes, through a, a common acquaintance, and uh, he, he showed me a book about Mimi's collection, which the book is, uh, is called uh, Untamed Encounters, and I just opened the pages and I saw the jewelry, and I was really, right away, I was taken by the bold the bold pieces by the, the, the you know, the vision, I could, I could sense a vision. And obviously the jury really touched me. The 22 karat gold really, um, really touched me. And also the rough stones. I think the fact that the materials were not tampered with, that they were very respected, that really touched me. Yes. And uh, I love this quote that's on this slide here. The collection, it is a small paragraph in a big book. And that's sort of, this, this conversation is only, I mean, we're kind of focusing on a few of your very great Chinese pieces that have Chinese elements. So we'll, we'll get to that as we go along, but just knowing how expansive your collection is and how long you've sort of acquired all these things and put them together. And that's what's fascinated me about the story, like the, the dedication you have to sourcing these things and taking them from your travels and turning them into something new. Um, I, I just love the story of like a collector in her full arc. So um, super excited to dive in. Where are you in this photo? It looks like Egypt. I'm in Egypt. But... I'm okay. in Laxo. This is in Laxo. Uh, gosh, I think it was in the early 70s uh, that I went to Egypt and then I went to Egypt again. So as you can see, there are no tourists. Yeah. about myself yeah is, you know which are sort of unusual things now to have photographs of people in famous places without tourists but you know i was lucky i was very lucky that's very true and i love the quote here too if you have something from me it is a one-off we'll sort of get to that later as we look at the jewelry um this must be somewhere in asia um, no, it's in cambodia okay okay Angkor Wat. And there was a big ceremony again, this was 18, 89 or 90, I think. And, you know, I was walking down Angkor and we were sort of surrounded by all these wonderful uh, people who were dancing and who were celebrating a festival. So that, that's it, Angkor. I've always worn masses of jewelry. And in fact, it was, it, for me, it was the best thing because wherever we went, even when we were in the middle of Tibet, there be, all the women used to come up to me. They sort of used to clutch me and touch me. And it had nothing to do with me. It was only that I had all these masses of bangles on mm -hmm. and they either wanted them or they hadn't seen them before. Or, you know, it was, it was sort of an identification. They, you know, it didn't matter. There was this creature and she had a lot of jewelry everywhere around the world like jewelry draws the eye it draws attention it sends signals to other people i mean so many things that jewelry well, does as a function so connection yeah. connection it really yes. connects people yeah. Yeah. 
so with that, we can sort of dive right into the jewelry. And I think today we're looking at all uh, necklaces. Um, I think a lot of your collection is big necklaces, rings, um, bracelets, but not so many earrings or brooches. But I mean, these necklaces are so, I mean, as you can see the one you're wearing, we'll get to that one too, but they're just so present. They're so big, colorful, beautiful, bold. Um, I love them. I'm fascinated. Wow. I, there are no earrings because I've never worn earrings. So, you know, no earrings. And brooches again, uh, I don't wear brooches, although I like brooches, I like earrings, but you know, I, I didn't know how to, how, you know, how to configure something right. in, in a style which didn't become me or which I wasn't interested in. So this necklace that we're seeing has Baroque pearls. Um, it's carved amber as well, the sort of big brown amber pieces. Um, yeah. Baltic amber, but it's 18th century uh, carved amber. That's so interesting. Where And you got these in China, you say? Well, I can get them in China, but they came from China and Mongolia. Uh, and I didn't know about all these things. It was by accident that a friend of mine had this incredible necklace of these ambers and I, I said where is it from what is it from and she said this was purchased in Venice uh, and then you know I, I never forgot these pieces and then one day I was in Paris and I saw a necklace of these same pieces and I went into the gallery and it was a phenomenal price and I spoke to the man and he said, yes, these are, you know, 17th, 18th century pieces. And I bought them wow. from, again from the same man in Venice. And, um, and I wanted to buy it, but, you know, it took a long time. I had to go back to London. I had to negotiate. And then I bought these pieces, took them back to London. And, um, of course, um, I did the necklace, which was perfectly hideous. <laughs> and look at this. And then um, I have a, a what they call a runner or a dealer, and he came here and he said, You know, where, what are you doing? And I said, You know, I just bought this quite recently in Paris. And he said, Gosh, I will bring you some of these elements the next time I go to China. Wow. And then this is how it started. It moves. This is a, a counting machine on an abacus on the left hand side. Oh, okay. You know, so it, it actually, it, it moves. And the man who made it is an architect. He's a uh, guy from uh, Argentina who makes jewelry and all okay. sorts of things, but basically he's an architect. And his, so, his Daniel, uh, Daniel Az Azaro? Azaro, yeah. yes, Daniel Azaro. Yes. He's made a few of these pieces, so we'll sort of see that he as well. a few pieces, yes. Um, he really only worked on the Chinese things because the other things I, I did with other people. Yeah. Right. Well, let's take a look at this next one. Um, this one is also Baltic amber from yes. China. And there's a piece of jade in this one too. It's sort of, here I can use the cursor and show. Yes. This is also a piece of jade that also came from another Chinese. Um, and this was the first necklace he made actually for me. So this, this is, you know, the first one. I love the sort of mechanism. It's almost like a, like a yoke, you know, you, you sort of yes. swing it over and, you know, these pieces look very good on. I mean, I don't know, you know, people, things are photographed, but you know, where worn on the right person looks yep. very good. Valerie, what do you think about um, the amber? I mean, is that sort of something you see in contemporary jewelry as well? I mean, this is contemporary jewelry using antique pieces, but... Yes, I like the construction. I find the construction of this necklace intriguing. You know, there's, it's, it's like a sculpture. It's like a piece of art. It's, you know, it's not the sort of, it's not like a chain each side. It's, it's, um, there's something, I don't know what word I would use. Uh, it's a quite intriguing necklace. And Mimi says, one, it's, you know, obviously jewelry, when worn, jewelry becomes alive, you know, it really, uh, obviously we've tried to take pictures as, you know, as, as pieces, but as soon as it's worn, it's, uh, it, it's possessed by someone and it possesses the person, it possesses the wearer, you know, it's, but no, I haven't seen, 
I haven't seen a lot of jewelry with amber. I mean, amber jewelry makes me think of like Scandinavian mid-century jewelry, but they use so much like the sort of translucent amber. And this is really the perfect opaque version where you can carve it and have like all these scenes depicted. So now we sort of move on to the toggle pieces. And I know you have a book on Chinese toggles, but I mean, toggles are they're just a part of clothing. There'd be like closures, clasps. Um, but I think this bit here is the toggle. This mm -hmm. is sitting on wood. It's very, very finely worked. It's very fine wood. It's got a few emerald stone around. It's got a little bit of cloth there. And it's got one rather nice toggle, quite a fine one. Mm -hmm. And on the back of, uh, of this toggle, in fact, it's a seal. So it would have been m more than a toggle. It, would have, it was a toggle with a seal at the bottom. Mm -hmm. This, you can sort of see the toggles a little better here. There, I love this one. It's sort of like a branch, like they're all sort of sprouting yeah. off these tree branches. You can't see because it's too difficult, but uh, the toggles have the same sort of flower going mm. on them and mm -hmm. branches as Daniel has put into the actual necklace. Mm -hmm. So if you were to look at the to toggles, you will see that this is, I think it's a lotus flower. Uh, this is replicated in the necklace with the tree. Yes. So it, it's quite, you know, special. It's quite a wild piece. Yes, yes. I, I really found it very yeah, wild the yeah. first time I saw it because it's it's good it, looking too and easy to really easy to to wear. You know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. You have to you, you have to have a sensibility yeah. about these things. Um, and this one brings in some lapis along with the toggle. I feel like I was trying to figure out what the carving was, and that almost looked like a lotus. Fish. A fish is, yeah, a fish at the top for sure. And then down here, it looked like a lotus to me, but I, I could yeah, be wrong. Yeah. That's with lapis. And again, you know, he reproduces things which are in the toggle in the actual gold work. Mm -hmm. This is the one you've got on. Yes. Um, so it's got rock crystal around sort of the, the oh, neck of it. Afghanistan, the things are uh, little paintbrushes, which is, you know, some sort of idea. And it is on a shell. So if you turn it round, mm -hmm. Daniel has put it on a shell, which he had in wow. his studio. I sort of love thinking about how long our, uh, rock crystal has been in jewelry. I mean, these must be antique beads as well, no? Well, rock crystal, you can date back, you know, I, sh I should imagine back to uh, Egyptian days, if not sure. before. And then this beautiful jade. This is also by uh, Ram Rajal, I think. This all the other pieces were uh, Daniel, like we mentioned, and then there's yeah. three from Ram. I, I just love. I I'm drawn to jade naturally, and I love how, you know, you've got the really smooth pieces. You've got the really. This is Burma, actually. Okay. I've quite a bit of jade. I had no idea. I I I don't understand then. I like the color combination. You know, I also bought white jade at the time. Right. But I, I don't understand. Jade, jade is very difficult. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of levels to like what makes it quality or what, you know, whatever. But, you know, if the carving is good and the color is good, that's what makes me like it personally. This yeah. is it. It's, it's a good looking piece. I love how the pieces, most of the pieces in the collection, how free they feel. Yes. How, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a feeling of, open-mindedness you know some people would be like oh wow how do you make a necklace with those you know but it's very the, the collection is so open-minded to me there's a feel even with the rings with the there's you know a feel of yes yeah of, uh, of a free of a free spirit totally and i think that's probably what brought you two together i mean you you met through someone who introduced you at a party and um, I love this photo too, just to kind of cap the end of the conversation here. But... I was being pulled off. Yes, I was being pulled off. <laughs> I think it's great that like you're both able to sort of tell the story of this collection now and you know, your travels and all the you know amazing places you've been and people you've met and how that kind of is super represented in the, the collection now. And you know, that's sort of a perfect capstone of like adventure exploration, collecting, like that is the story here. So 
thank you so much for sharing it with us and the, the first dibs audience and they can learn more about the collection uh, once we have it all up and thank you so much hope you guys have a nice afternoon thank you thank Levi you. we have a beautiful weather in London yeah. uh, we're now all going to have coffee and cake Perfect. <laughs> coffee and that cake. sounds good <laughs>